In problem number 45, we have a similar situation. Again, we're trying to find critical points of a function, that function being x squared plus cosine inverse of x on the interval negative 1 to 1, and then we want to find the absolute extrema of that function. So the first thing we want to do, again, is we want to take the derivative of f and find out is there anywhere where the derivative is 0, and is there anywhere where the derivative is undefined. Uh, and that will give us our critical points. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's take a derivative, and we get f prime of x is equal to, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of cosine inverse of x is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. OK, so we've got a derivative. And now I want to know, OK, is there anywhere where this thing is 0? And is there anywhere where this thing is undefined? Well, to actually figure that out, I need to do a little bit more work. And what I'd like to do is, since I have two terms here, it's a little bit harder to uh, solve than I would like it to be. Uh, what I'd like to do is, let's make it one fraction first and then deal with it. OK, so what I want to do is let's get a common denominator here. And the common denominator would be this square root of 1 minus x squared. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this 2x by square root of 1 minus x squared. If I do, I get that f prime of x is equal to 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared over square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. OK, so now we're ready to combine these two and make them one fraction. If I do, I get that f prime of x is equal to 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 over um, square root of 1 minus x squared. OK, so now we're ready to ask the question, what are the critical values? Because there are two things that could happen here. Either I get a derivative that's equal to 0 from this thing, or I get a derivative that's undefined from this thing. But the, the point is, once you've gotten it into one fraction, to be 0, for a fraction to be 0, the top has to be 0. For a fraction to be undefined, the bottom has to be 0. So I'm really asking the question, where is the top equal to 0 for this derivative? Or where is the bottom equal to 0 for this derivative? If either one is 0, I get a critical value or a critical point. OK, so let's figure out where those two things could happen. First, let's just look at the bottom and say, when is the bottom 0? Or when is this derivative undefined? Well, if 0 equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, that means that 0 must be basically equal to 1 minus x squared, right? And so that means that x squared is 1, or that x is equal to plus or minus 1. So plus and minus 1 we know are critical points in this problem. Uh, so I'll say critical points. And I'll just box that in so we can remember that these were critical points. Now we ask, also have to ask the question, well, what if the top is equal to 0? So what if 0 was equal to 2x times square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1? I can move the 1 to the other side. And I get that 1 would be equal to 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Um, I could square both sides of this thing if I wanted to. Um, and I shouldn't change anything because they're both equal to 1. So I get that 1 is equal to 4x squared times 1 minus x squared. So 1 is equal to 4. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, 4x squared minus 4x to 
to the fourth. And now I've got some sort of a quadratic equation here if I move the one to the other side. Or I could just move everything over to this side. And I think that that's better. I could say that 4x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And you can see that this is a quadratic equation in x squared. So I'll come over here. Let's erase a little here over here. And I want to say, okay, I've got a quadratic equation in x squared. So I can solve for x squared using the quadratic equation. So I've got negative b, or 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 16, minus 4 times a times c, which is 16, all over 2 times a, which is 8. Well, 16 minus 16 is 0, so that goes away. And I just have 4 over 8, or 1 half. So x squared is equal to 1 half by the quadratic equation. And so x is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of 1 half. OK. So um, <clears throat> these, the next question I would ask is, are both of these actually something that I could plug into my original function, plus or minus the square root of 1 half. And it seems that both are okay. Uh, cosine inverse of x uh, takes in values <clears throat> that are in between, um, let's see, cosine only takes in positive values to its uh, inverse function. So I believe that we could go ahead and get rid of the negative. And we can just look at x is equal to the square root of 1 half. OK, so let's go back now. And we've got another critical value. And that's x is equal to positive square root of 1 half. And now let's go ahead and plug in all of our critical values, critical points, um, call this one a critical point, uh, into our original function, as well as the endpoints. Okay, so our endpoints are negative 1 and 1, and we've got this critical point of square root of 1 half, and we've got critical points of negative 1 and 1, which don't really matter because those are also our endpoints. So let's plug everything in and see what we get. So we want to look at f of negative 1. We want to look at f of the square root of a half. And we want to look at f of 1. All right. Um, so if I plug in f of negative 1, then I get negative 1 squared plus the cosine inverse of negative 1. If I plug in square root of 1 half, I get square root of 1 half squared plus cosine inverse of the square root minus 1 half. Finally, if I plug in 1, I get uh, 1 squared plus cosine inverse of 1. OK, so now let's look at these uh, to see what they all add up to. We've got negative 1 squared, which is 1. And then we've got cosine inverse of negative 1. In other words, cosine of something 
is negative 1, what is the something? So cosine of pi is negative 1. So I'll say that this is plus pi. Okay, uh, square root of 1 half squared is 1 half. And cosine inverse of square root of negative 1 half, it ends up being something like 0.785 approximately. Okay, and then this last one, we've got 1 squared, which is 1, and cosine inverse of 1, which is um, cosine of something is 1, cosine of what is 1, 0. So plus zero. So what we end up here is something uh, one bigger than pi. Pi is 3.14. So we're talking about like 4.14. This one is a little bit bigger than one. And this one actually is one. So which one is the smallest? Well, the smallest would be one. Correct? The biggest would be 4.16 something, or 1 plus pi. So let's write down our answer here. Uh, F as an absolute maximum of the very biggest this thing could be is 1 plus pi at f of x or at x value being negative 1. And f has an absolute minimum of um, 1 at x is equal to, let's see, that happens at 1. And that is my answer.